So the grand total spending, and that was a female only dorm as well. At first I was like, okay, this is a bit weird. I feel like that's just the fun of traveling. I do get lost. I just basically don't believe what I'm seeing. How did I know to trust Charlie and Daniel? It is what I'm gonna call a period disaster story. What am I supposed to do with 3G? Nothing loads. I was getting rammed and I was like, wow. And I've kind of discovered or I found out a bit more about my love languages hey guys welcome back to my channel and welcome to today's video it has been literally such a long time since i've sat here at my desk and we've had a chat a catch up i if you didn't know recently got home from germany i was traveling in germany basically for like just under three weeks and then i very spontaneously went to amsterdam and brussels afterwards so yeah i'm just here to um yeah kind of like spill some tea i guess i got back on monday it's currently sunday for context and yeah i have been filming my week so you'll see all of that and see what i've been up to but yeah, i leave next tuesday i'm like not in the uk for very long at all but yeah i don't want to talk too much in this intro we have enough to talk about anyway so yeah we're gonna dive into the video definitely i like it if you do enjoy it as always and subscribe if you want to stick around okay the first thing i just want to do mention because it is now live for you guys to download just like my thailand itinerary which i shared i'm also doing the same with my germany one i basically repurposed the itineraries so that they're fit for you guys to use if you want to travel around germany basically it's like a 23 day itinerary and it is everything i did it will tell you all of the hostels that i stayed at how I got to different places. I will share as many itineraries as possible with you guys. And so going forwards, just because it takes me time making them and stuff, there will be like a small amount you need to pay. But like, if you want to get a feel for what it looks like, then just download my Thailand one because that first one was 100% free. It's so detailed. You'll have everything, okay? Everything in one place. So yeah, that is down below. The second thing I then want to address is my total spending for Germany. And then I also calculated how much I spent in Amsterdam and Brussels as well. I make spreadsheets, you guys know that. Um, I don't know why I find joy in doing this, but apparently I do. And I wanna share with you guys how much it's gonna cost you if you want to do something similar. So the grand total spending was £1,608.85. That is in pounds. Some of the amounts were in euros, but I like converted them. I mean, the cheapest thing was my rail ticket, nine euros to get around the whole of Germany, which is ridiculous. And I mean, I did have to buy a second ticket in August, but like, 14 pounds basically to get around the whole of germany i think that's honestly crazy the breakdown then is quite a bit different to thailand most of my money was spent on accommodation like i spent 1162 pounds 58 pence on accommodation just because in contrast to thailand where the accommodation is so cheap and you don't have to book in advance to get good deals when you're traveling around europe i find that you need to book in advance a and it's going to be more expensive obviously like dorm rooms are about 30 to 40 pounds per night and then if i was getting private accommodation which i did need because i work when i'm traveling that would be like, I don't know, 60, 70 pounds. I spent just about 200 pounds on food. Tours and activities, that was like just under 100 pounds. So that was like my 10K run in Berlin, like Lime scooter passes, rides in Hamburg. The other section is mostly going to the toilet because in Germany they charge you about one euro. Washing and drying, yeah, that was like the other section. And then what's the other one? Okay, international transport, I should address this because I basically paid for a return flight to and from Germany. I booked it as like a multi-city flight. Basically, I flew into Cologne and I was planning to leave from Berlin. So I booked that in advance. My outbound flight was like 39 pounds and then my flight home was like 42 pounds. So it was so incredibly cheap. But obviously because I extended my trip, I basically canceled that return flight. I didn't cancel it because it would have cost me more money than the actual flight to cancel it or change it. So I just didn't board the flight. I didn't do anything about that. And then I paid instead to get the Eurostar home. That's on my other spreadsheet actually, which I'll just get up now. Yeah, I spent 543 pounds 80. That was across like six days, I think. So yeah, most of that went on again a Accommodation. My Eurostar ticket home was like just over £100. So yes, it was a lot more than the flight, but I was very happy to, you know, do that just because I really wanted to stay out there and I was like embracing, as I said, the spontaneity of traveling and just going with the flow. Um, not everyone is gonna do that, but I mean, I did end up like saving some money on accommodation because I was going to stay in a private place 
in Berlin on my last night, closer to the airport, which would have cost me like 70 pounds or something. But then instead I was staying in a dorm room in Hamburg, which obviously cost me less. You know, I saved a bit, but then I did end up spending more obviously. Domestic transport was a bit more in this last week just because we had to get a Flix bus from Hamburg to Amsterdam, 42 pounds. And then one from Amsterdam to Brussels, that was like 10 pounds. Over the first 22 days, so this is basically like my original trip. I spent 68 pounds 09 on average per day. A lot of it goes on accommodation, especially in peak season. Like remember this is July, August, summer season. Then my average spend per day in the last week, so over six days was 71 pounds 90. So it did jump up a bit. Well, actually not that much to be honest with you. But yeah, I did find that like certain places were just really expensive for example in amsterdam the supermarkets and also brussels actually food was just so expensive i was like wow but you know that's what you learn when you're traveling you know i do like try and set a budget i knew for the germany trip i wanted to spend no more than two grand and i knew it was going to be a bit over 1500 so i'm very happy with that if you want any tips or stuff on budgeting you have to let me know so i can talk about it in future videos in my last video from brussels so with like charlie and daniel we did like a bit of a q a in that video so I wasn't gonna make this one a full Q&A and also I had so much other stuff to share with you guys But you guys have sent in some really good questions on YouTube So like actually in the comments and I thought it made sense to like answer some of those because I normally go to Instagram For a Q&A. This first one is okay a comment that says off topic But once you're done traveling, could you do a video about choosing the right hostel as a female? How not to get robbed and basically how to not get lost in a foreign country so yeah let's just do them in order okay so choosing the right hostel as a female and this also links on to questions that i get quite a lot about like staying in mixed dorms but yeah choosing the right hostel so i use booking.com but more recently i've been using hostel world a lot more i generally look for a hostel with like a high rating above eight i always then read reviews i look at the pictures look at the facilities they have as well i would prefer to go to a hostel where they have like a reception that's either open for 24 hours or that is like very well staffed, but also with the safety thing, like know the emergency service numbers in the countries that you are traveling. On booking.com as well, which I do still use a lot, um, when I'm looking at reviews, if there is anything that is read, I don't like look at that anymore. I just stay clear and move on. I mean, I have made mistakes and you are gonna get things wrong. So I talked about this in my Frankfurt video where I basically ended up in this A&O hostel. I wasn't comfortable there. I didn't feel safe. I was going to end up in a double bed with someone else, which was going to be like a nightmare. And that was a female only dorm as well. Um, but yeah, I think if you do go for like higher rated hostels, you'll generally be fine. And as I said, like my itineraries have all of the places I've stayed in. So if you do need help, then just like look at that. On to like mixed dorms versus female only dorms. So I really don't mind staying in mixed dorms. I put on my story at one point. In Germany, I think I was in Munich, yeah, and I was in a mixed dorm and I was like, I'm just with all guys again, yet again. Females do tend to go for female only dorms, so the mixed ones tend to be guy dominated. But then I've spoken to other people like guys who have been in mixed dorms with all other females. So I just really think it depends and I feel like it's just been coincidence that I found myself in mixed dorms with mostly other guys. But like I don't mind being in a mixed dorm with all other guys because people are always so so friendly when you're traveling. Like you're all in one boat, you're all pretty much backpackers. In Edinburgh for example there was a guy who was basically like older than my dad and at first I was like okay this is a bit weird but he was like the loveliest person ever when you just get to know them and you speak to them like you just have to be friendly talk to people get to know them so you don't feel as if you're in a room full of strangers and like you do always have your own space you have your own bed that's why i prefer to be on a top bunk just because i feel as if i have my own little like den kind of area i don't know it's a bit weird and if you do go for like a hostel with a reception that's open all the time then you know you can always go to them and like ask to move rooms if it's that bad i mean if you just don't want to be with guys then book a female only dorm it's a personal preference but i'm fine with it just because like you're all humans at the end of the day you know you can find yourself in unsafe or difficult situations wherever you stay okay you just have to have your wits about you coming back to this question then how to not get robbed and basically how to not get lost so the second question how to not get lost i really don't feel like i can share that much advice because i do 
get lost quite a bit. I feel like that's just the fun of traveling. But like use maps, take a portable charger with you because if you are always using maps, it will drain your battery, trust me. Plan where you're gonna go, ask people. You know, people are always happy to help. And yeah, in terms of not getting robbed, I have like an inner pocket in my bum bag where I keep like my money and my cards and stuff. I never take all of my money out with me at all times. Like say if I'm carrying cash, I will only take bits out at a time. You can get like flat, pouch things that like sit under your clothes i think so that might be something worth looking into as i said i have this discreet pocket in my bum bag which would be very hard for someone to access without me realizing i didn't think we'd get onto this topic straight away but like i am um, Realize when I'm traveling that my OCD is really quite bad. I've never been diagnosed with OCD, but I do have very obsessive and compulsive thoughts with certain things. And so that is like locking doors, locking my lockers. I basically film them being shut because I don't trust myself. When I'm out and about, I am constantly checking my bag. I'm like, oh my gosh, did I put my camera back in my bag? So I am always checking things that are there. And I think it's a good habit to get into, like just check your stuff. But I wouldn't say go to the extreme like myself. Um, but yeah, that's something I need to address personally. I just basically don't believe what I'm seeing. And I think because when I am traveling and I'm traveling on my own, I know that I am the only person there to look after myself really. So I'm like, I double and triple and quadruple check everything. But yeah, those are my thoughts on not getting robbed. I mean, you also have to think about the place you're going to, um, whether it's known for like pickpockets and stuff. But generally in hostels, when you're staying with other backpackers, people don't want to steal your stuff. I don't put my whole rucksack in the locker in a hostel room because I just take out my valuables, I put those in my locker and lock it away safely. And then I just leave everything else, like my clothes and my shoes and like my toiletries just out. Because at the end of the day, if someone is gonna steal that, like I'm not gonna be too bothered. Like it's gonna be annoying, but people in hostels generally aren't there to steal stuff. I mean, you can never say never, right? But I just don't put my rucksack in the locker anymore because it's just such an effort to get the big thing in and out the locker. And sometimes the lockers aren't even big enough to put that stuff in. Going back to the hostel question, actually, find a hostel with lockers in the dorms um and then it's up to you whether you want to put your whole bag in there or not i have also screenshotted another question i'm sorry i should have like noted down so so many others but the question basically was about charlie and daniel so if you didn't know i in munich met charlie and daniel and then i ended up traveling with them this question is were you at all nervous that they so charlie and daniel may not be trustworthy especially since you're a young female traveling alone um yeah basically trust like how did i know to trust charlie and daniel and this is a big question as well the answer is i really don't know like in the past i have had issues with trusting people like big big issues i haven't even addressed this online i don't know whether i ever will do and i mean with charlie and daniel when i first had like a conversation with them they were so like friendly they seemed really nice really chatty and you know they seemed a good laugh so from the get-go i felt fine with them and then we spent the rest of the day together we went out clubbing in like a big big group so i was with lots of other people and then for the rest of my time in munich i was pretty much with charlie and or daniel so i was getting to know them more and more every day and then we were in berlin together and they came to my race and this kind of friendship bond grew and formed really quickly i've been very vocal about this in the past like i haven't really spoken to many guys i haven't had many guy friends and i found it really kind of awkward talking to guys but you know traveling brings me out of my shell i've learned so much about myself i've grown in confidence and yeah i don't know how i knew to trust them but i suppose in the things they did like their actions i felt as if i could trust them and then i suppose like you've just got to go with the fact that you know you can trust people until they give you a reason not to i've heard that said before i actually got that advice from my dating advice video so where i went to london and i asked strangers for dating advice somebody said that and i think it's so true i don't know it's a really hard one and i mean i have questioned it because i'm like wow i've basically traveled with two people that were once strangers, you know, like a few weeks ago. But I guess you just have to go with your gut as well. I would always say though, you do have to have your guard up when you're traveling, even when you do make friends, like still have your wits about you. I mean, I was in situations with them both where I could have been very vulnerable, um, but I suppose at that point I did trust them enough to know that I was safe and i was gonna be okay i know that was really waffly i don't even know if that made sense but that's kind of my answer the next thing we're gonna talk about is 
something that happened in brussels it's gonna be a little story time and i was gonna talk about it in the vlog but the vlog ended up being really long anyway so i thought i would save it for this little chat video it is what i'm gonna call a period disaster story because it was definitely a disaster story well it could have been a lot worse but it was quite intense and if you know me i haven't had a period for a lot of my life and so i am still very inexperienced but i use the menstrual cup and it works so well for traveling i talked all about using the menstrual cup and stuff when traveling um and being on your period in episode seven of the germany series so vlog seven i can link it down below on the screen but essentially something i didn't talk about in brussels i was still on my period at that time apparently it was the 7th of august i love looking at pictures to get dates anyway i'd been on a run that morning and then we were out and about exploring we were on scooters and it was about oh i don't know what time maybe like 5 p.m this was apparently a heavy period day and i didn't realize it so we were just in the city center basically and daniel was getting a belgian waffle so we were just waiting and i was standing there and i suddenly felt like i was wetting myself okay this is gonna be quite graphic i understand if you don't want to listen to this then you can skip it i was wearing my classic yellow shorts from australia which i honestly love but you know when you're like looking around trying to see if anything's like coming out of your shorts that was basically me but i basically turned to charlie and daniel and i was like look i need to find the toilet as soon as possible so i basically ran off didn't give them any more information because they didn't need it at that point. Thank goodness we were in the city center and not like somewhere else because there were lots of other buildings around but finding public toilets in new places, even in like London is so annoying. But I came across this bougie hotel and it looked like there was this event going on. I didn't even know, but I sneaked in the front door and I asked the lady on reception, I was like, look, well, I didn't say this exactly, but I was like, please, can I use your toilet? And she basically said, it's normally only allowed to be used by guests. I don't know, I must have given her puppy eyes or something because she was like, okay, you can just go and use the toilet, just be quite discreet about it because there were people in like these gowns and dresses, there must have been something going on. So I went to the toilet and yeah, let's just say the menstrual cup was... A volcano <laughs> exploding i don't know it was overflowing a waterfall i don't really know hunger games bloodbath comes to mind whatever that's too graphically and normally when i take out the menstrual cup whether i do that in the shower or in the toilet say at home or in a bathroom somewhere i can just easily rinse over a sink but i was in a toilet cubicle and there were sinks outside and there were people in these toilets so i was like great what do i do so apparently having now spoken to my sister about this you in that situation just put the menstrual cup back in but i being inexperienced i didn't know what to do i was panicking i was like i need to rinse this thing so i waited for the toilets to be quiet i peered around the door i ran out with like i'm not gonna lie blood everywhere on my hands i quickly like rinsed the cup underwater i ran back into the toilet put it back in and i was like oh my gosh thank goodness i had wipes because i could wipe myself down and wipe stuff that needed to be wiped but yeah i don't know how long this took me maybe about 15 minutes i don't know but anyway i found charlie and daniel again who by this point were just sitting down on the pavement with the scooters that we were riding daniel was eating his waffle and you know they obviously asked me like is everything okay like what happened um i didn't really know what to say at first i was like do i say i've just been constipated for 15 minutes do i say i need to do a big shite or do i just tell them the truth i basically just said something like you know it's stuff that thankfully you'll never have to deal with and they got what i was hinting at so yeah and i mean at that point i was very comfortable with them as i said before periods are normal it's not disgusting i mean you can find yourself in difficult situations like this and it's gonna happen to everyone but yeah like don't be ashamed of it okay but yeah that's my uh period story and i mean the lesson going forwards is that on my heavier days if i can predict those i need to change the cup more during the day whenever i go traveling i make a list of the lessons that i kind of learn they're very varied some are more like practical things and logistical things others are quite deep we could say the first one is that the wi-fi is much slower than in thailand like thailand wi-fi was insane like there was 5g and it was amazing but in germany the wi-fi was so slow and sometimes non-existent and even in hostels sometimes the wi-fi was so so bad i was having to use 4g to upload videos even in cities like in some places in berlin i had 3g and when i see 3g on my screen 
I lose the plot. What am I supposed to do with 3G? Nothing loads. I have said this before, it was more expensive than expected. Like I knew it was gonna be more expensive, but I think some places were just quite a bit more expensive than I thought they were going to be. And that's just talking generally like food, accommodation, stuff like that. I've ridden trains are probably, I'm gonna say definitely my favorite form of public transport. I do love trains. You know, I don't get motion sickness in them and I can work when I'm on trains. I just really like trains. Related to trains, in Germany, I feel like there is no patience with people letting you off the train before they get on. And I feel like this might be an issue related to the nine euro ticket because the trains are so busy, but people literally don't let you off the trains before they get on. I was in a situation one time where I was coming down the stairs from a double decker train and I had my rucksacks on. I was basically taking up the whole staircase, but people were still trying to bombard past me to get seats on the train. And I eventually had to say like, please excuse me, like let me off this train because people just kept coming at me and I couldn't get off. I was getting rammed and I was like, wow. In my video all about loneliness, which I can link down below, I did mention about feeling a little bit lonely in Germany at one point and I found this new love for home, which was really nice. At some points I felt like I needed a book to do a bit of reading. I've mentioned that my OCD is bad. I have apparently written get a new swimming costume. Don't know where that came from. Going back to the trains actually, I wrote down because this actually came from an experience on a train and I won't share the full story, but people in Germany are sometimes very reluctant to move their bags off seats and let you sit next to them. Yeah, I had a situation where someone refused to let me sit next to them and then the problem escalated, not with me, but with someone else. It was actually a huge fight. I'm gonna say like a verbal fight that I witnessed. It was crazy. The final thing is about like, Oh, I don't know. I don't know how much to address about this. But on this list, the last thing on this list is the fact that I've kind of discovered or I've found out a bit more about my love languages. I don't want to go into any more detail at this point. And I don't really know what I would share, if anything, and stuff. But yeah, I mean, I was with two guys. We're just going to say it was a friendship at this point, okay? It was a really great friendship. That's all I'm going to say, okay, at this point. And I hope you guys understand that sometimes I need a little bit of space just to process things myself and have some boundaries. But yeah, that is me for this video. I am going to stop talking now. A huge shout out to you guys for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Obviously, definitely like it if you do. Comment down below where you actually think i'm going next subscribe if you are new and hit the bell so you know when i upload and again thank you so so much for traveling with me and for coming along these adventures i'm very thirsty and i'm very hot i need to open the windows so yeah i'm gonna say goodbye as always i will speak to you very soon in another video bye whoa my hair is gonna annoy me and yeah just talk a bit of Hello. I love bringing you guys traveling with me. Like it's the best thing ever. Ew, there is like a head. Yeah, I'm also gonna open the window because there is sweat literally dripping down my leg. Ew. Well, that's my eye drops timer. Stop. They basically adopted me. You know, they took me with them to Amsterdam and Brussels. I was still myself and I was an independent young lady. We could say. Let me just double check for you guys. What was happening on this day? If that hotel did not let me in to the toilet, I don't know what I would have done. I need a blink a few times. I actually don't know what I'm waffling on about now. I'm just hot and I'm stuffy. Okay, that's awkward. The sweat dripping down my leg is not even a joke at this point. It's dripping, dripping. I may as well be in the shower. <laughs>